Hello everybody, it's Lazel here with another video and today I will talk about the last troop combination that I still have to feature in my How I Would Build series. But before we get started, I'd really like to ask you guys that if you enjoy the content that I'm doing, I'd really appreciate a subscription to my channel. I have just seen recently that a lot of my watch time comes from below 20% of my subscribers. So I would really appreciate if we push that number upwards to 20%. So thanks in advance and now enjoy the content. So I would say we better get started. And as always, we will start with the gear. And as always, I will only feature gear parts from level 30 and upwards. And for the combination of infantry plus archers, it is actually pretty simple because for the Dusk Ode is already a very good weapon that you can equip at level 30 and it has actually everything you need. Of course, infantry attack ain't the stat that we are prioritizing or that we are mostly looking for. We would prefer infantry HP or defense, but still every stat on this gear part is very beneficial for its double archer attack especially and the additional mild speed is also very nice especially because in many true combinations of infantry plus archers you don't bring any mages so your march is usually faster than a mage march so yeah always nice to have some additional march speed the 35 weapon the fiery crossbow of course is lacking in the infantry attack it has the cavalry attack for that instead and that doesn't help us at all but we when we took look into damage stats we always want to focus our backline so the fiery crossbow would be the thing to pick at 35. Coming to the accessory it ain't that easy especially on C30 because there's not really many gear parts that feature several stats that are very helpful but in the end it would come to the Dark Lord Guard a very good thing to have especially because you only have the Archer attack that helps your formation but still that is very good and the stamina recovery and the monster attack speed also very helpful for my often named reasons of monsters dropping as red than if you you want to grow very fast and very efficient you have to hunt monsters to keep up with your forging plan to, co to keep up with the azurite income from monsters and all of that stuff so dark lord guard would be the thing to pick in my opinion on 35 comes now the definitely best gear part in the whole set for infantry plus archers because the perfect heart has everything that an infantry mage player needs the infantry attack is very helpful the archer attack also very beneficial Official, but mostly the focus pretty fast comes to the angels because angel attack by 21% is pretty good if you can find it in orange uh, or if you can forge it in orange quality. So the perfect heart just has everything that a um, very aggressive player that plays infantry plus archers needs. Definitely the thing to forge in my opinion. When we look into the helmet, those are also very beneficial gear parts for the infantry plus archer combination because all already the crown of praise gives your frontline focused unit and your backline focused unit an additional hp boost and as already with the weapon you have additional march speed this or these stats get improved when you go to the 35 gear part the dominator mask everything just gains a few more percent and very helpful when you go for these gear parts when we come to the close it will stick to the level 30 armor in my opinion i think that the templar crown uh, the templar armor is probably the best chest when it comes to infantry focus players i have seen infantry focus players that as a c40 go for the guardian breastplate only for the angel attack which i can totally understand but for very budget oriented players and players that want a very healthy frontline the templar armor is the armor to go in my opinion and i would also stick to this armor when you go up to c35 and could forge level 35 armor because i don't i still don't think that the titan armor is a good armor of course for infantry mage players it can be helpful in certain situations for example when you're doing the undead king yes then the titan armor is nice but i don't see it very efficient in fighting situations so i would always stick 
to the Templar armor. Finally, we come to the boots and the boots are very simple. I would always have a gear part of the sacred boots for its monster attack speed and the stamina recovery. But for fighting performance, I would go for the dust boots. They are also very nice when you send your troops out to gather gems, for example, because of the additional gather speed boost. But the archer attack is the focus here and you can give them a nice boost. So from all the gear parts that we have already seen, you can see that archers have a very high attack percentage when it comes to gear parts. So definitely a nice thing to have. And when we then come to the 35 boots, you will lose the archer attack from the level 30 dusk boots. So you need to consider for yourself what is more important for you. The dragon hide boots could be something that you can forge in purple quality because of the better stamina recovery and monster attack speed. But also these gear parts aren't bad. You have additional infantry attack and archer HP. Sure, we would like to see to swap these things for archer attack and infantry HP, but that would be too strong in my opinion. So these boots are also a nice addition. You really have to find out for yourself what you would prefer, like two stats or two medium stats for your frontline and backline unit, or one very beneficial stat for your backline unit when it comes to the boots. Okay, that's it about the gear. And now we will look into the enhancements. And as I always say, when it comes to enhancements, the boots, the accessory and the belt are, I would always pick the damage taken reduced or damage increased when attacking enhancements. So I won't feature those gear parts when we look into the weapon. As an archer focus player, it really depends on your play style. If you really like to play a lot of stacks with your team, then I would look out for the archer attack enhancement. If you really prefer to play alone, I personally would uh, look out for the angel attack enhancement just because of the fact that when you play alone, you tend to send angels more often, or at least I would send angels more often. If you really like to play in the team, I would then prefer the archer attack because just for me personally, I don't send angels to stacks because I don't want to lose them in a good defense from our opponents. So this is how I would decide for the weapon. When we look into the helmet, it is also a very personal decision. Many players like to go for the infantry HP, which I totally understand. I also have that. But if you want to move your priorities more into very good fighting performance, you could consider going for, for example, reduced damage from archers, which, uh, which have a certain strength against infantry. But you could also go for reduced damage from mages or from angels, like the most uh, common damage units in the game. So you can, it is really up to yourself. I personally would always start with the simple infantry HP enhancement because I can, I know when I'm still a growing castle, these stats help me out with my event performance and things like the Undead King, the Evil Tyrant, the Fiend Trial and all of that stuff. So I would start with that. And when you at a certain point found out for yourself that you want to become a better fighting castle, you could look out for a certain reduced damage from X enhancement. This also counts for the chest enhancement. I personally would start with the infantry defense because infantry has the highest defense in the game or from the units in the game. And then you can go for certain reduced damage from X enhancement if you really want to increase your fighting performance against certain troop combinations. Or you can look out for a certain uh, mix of reduced damage from X. So here's something from everything. Okay, that's it about the enhancements. And now we continue with the pet skills. This also ain't an easy thing, but in my opinion, most players or every player plays with the force expansion, which has its reasons. You have an increased army size that is very helpful. And then I personally would go for additional attack expert or for additional army attack, just for the reason that archers definitely need attack support. You also have a big focus on your angels because you're playing with the perfect heart and increasing the attack even farther is very helpful in my opinion. The life source ain't a bad pet skill either because infantry has the highest frontline HP pool and archers have the highest HP pool in the backline. And I've seen many situations where archers, not even the odd archers, are facing the opponent's mages. And because of a very big health pool, they were able to win the fight. And by that, I want to say that life source can be very helpful too, because all of your units from their certain uh, position in the 
army formation, either frontline or backline, have a very high health pool and increasing that even farther is a very good thing in my opinion. Then we come to yeah the last pick and this is in my opinion also up to everybody themselves. It really depends on what your play style is. If you want to go out alone and attack a lot of castles by yourself, I personally really like the anti-infantry skill because especially with the formation of archers plus infantry, you're, you will always run if your opponent has infantry at home, you will always first run into the opponent's infantry, which is in my opinion the reason why I really like to pick the skill to immediately shred the formation from the center and then work your way out. If you find out over the time that your formation isn't healthy enough, you of course could go for things like the steel skin to take reduced damage from archers or like the smother flare or the resist magic. But all in all, for me personally, I would go for the anti-infantry skill just to disrupt the opponent's formation as fast as possible. Yeah, this would be my pet setup. And now we come to the very interesting part to choosing the artifacts. As always, the array is the budget part of my videos because if you really want to work an array full of legendary artifacts, it will take either a very long time or you would have to buy a lot of packs to improve yourself at a certain speed. So this is the budget part of my video. Artifact that I see probably in every array for a budget player is the Excalibur and I would also see it in this array because here are also a lot of stats that are very helpful. Only the second star isn't beneficial for the infantry archer combination. So all in all a good artifact for this combination. Then when we look into the Chukunu, it is an artifact that I would definitely build because every stat on it helps you out. You have archer attack as base stat, archer HP also very helpful when you're for example doing the undead king. On the third star you have infantry HP always good to have a very healthy front line and on the fourth star you have archer damage which is better than archer attack. I made a video about that here and all in all a good artifact definitely to build for this combination. Now when we look into other artifacts I also really like the Gusli artifact in this combination because on the second star as I have said it in many other videos the attack boost also helps out your angel so the Gusli is really an artifact that I see in probably like every budget array because a lot of things on it are very helpful only the fourth star is something that has to be talked about but if you're a cavalry focused player then even that is very helpful for you so Gusli definitely a thing to pick in my opinion. The combination of archers plus infantry is a very damage oriented and a very offensive oriented combination so I also like to balance that with some more healthy stats which is why I see the Ganijang Muge also as a very good artifact in it. The base stat is HP boost that helps you out with infantry, your archers, your angels, all of that and also on the second star you immediately benefit from infantry HP and on the third you have infantry attack. Of course the fourth star the with cavalry attack won't help you out but the fifth star the end game of this artifact is also a good thing to have because damage reduction for army is very strong and something that you can have an eye on. Of course we could say why not go for the feather dress but this is actually the reason why because the end game of the feather dress ain't as good as the end game of the Ganijang in my opinion because of the damage reduction for the whole army and not just one unit. So the feather dress wouldn't be a thing that I would include. Of course, reduced damage from archers as a base set is also very nice, but I am also very event oriented like Undead King for example, which is why I personally see the Garnijang with a certain power spike way earlier in the game. Of course, later when you have on the fifth star the HP boost or also archer HP can be very helpful in events, but when I see the damage reduction for army on the Ganijang Mujé, I would pick this artifact in addition to that. So now we have already four artifacts and I would like to talk about two other legendary artifacts that I see in this combination. I have to show it you in my pack because I don't fuse uh, artifacts that I don't need. And two artifacts 
effects that I would like to talk about is either the Heavenly Spear or the Apollo's Bow. The Apollo's Bow is a very strong artifact, not for all of its different star levels or something like that. It is very strong because of the skill that it gets on the third star, where you have with every attack is a chance to land a critical hit, which deals damage by 1.5% and the chance is 7% for every unit's attack. But what I also like on the Apollo's Bow is that you already get an archer attack boost on the second star. When we compare that with the Heavenly Spear, which is a way more aggressive artifact in late game from the third star on, on the second star you only have archer HP. Of course, also beneficial for you, but the Apollo's Bow gives you a certain power spike a bit earlier and on the third star where you get damage increased against angels, you are already able to unlock the skill which makes the Apollo's Bow such a highly uh, used artifact. When we look into the Heavenly Spear, if you really want to focus an additional legendary artifact and you're sure that you can upgrade it very fast, then the Heavenly Spear is very interesting because from the third star on this thing turns into a big damage boost. You have attack boost for your whole army that also includes angels, very interesting, followed by archer attack, army damage, archer damage. So a very aggressive artifact that gets its power boost from the later stars. The Apollo's bow really shines in the early game because on the second star you already get the archer attack and on the third star you unlock this very powerful skill. Then of course with infantry attack and cavalry HP, not that very attractive for an infantry plus archer player. And on the six star you get army damage, also very nice because your angels profit from it, but you also get army damage on the fifth star from the heavenly spear. So it really depends on how fast you can achieve certain power levels when it comes to artifacts. So this is the array that I would build and now we come to the Colossus. The Colossus is actually pretty simple. I often say it on your frontline unit, you want to focus the stats that are there for its defense. So infantry HP, infantry defense, reduce damage from archers and from mages and the other stats like reduce damage from cavalry or infantry attack are stats that can fall behind because they are not that important at the moment. And when we look into the Colossus for the archers, of course, just as the mage Colossus, you, or at least I personally would prefer stats like the archer attack, the damage against certain troop combinations. And depending on what event you are going to play, you can also have an eye on archer HP or on archer defense. Just make sure that you always have an eye on unlocking the next best Colossus skill. So don't just pump all of your Titan Crystals and Ancient Relics into one skill. Also have an eye on unlocking these Colossus skills. And lastly, we come to the few Zodiacs that I personally think are very interesting, especially since we got the crests where we get the birthstone crystal that can be exchanged for any Zodiac that we want. It becomes now way more interesting to have an eye on certain Zodiacs. And the most interesting one is the Zagitarius for sure, because you have Archer Tech as a base stat, followed by Infantry and Archer HP and Archer Damage. So definitely a Zodiac that you can prioritize. Then we have two more that I personally think are very interesting. I just have to find them. Here they are. And the Aquarius is also very helpful because a lot of its stats are helpful for your troop combination. Of course, infantry attack or archer HP aren't very helpful, but they help you out. Every stat and every percentage matters and damage increased infantry is also a good thing to have. As I just explained in the pet skill, you have the chance or you want to disrupt the opponent's formation as fast as possible, which is why I think the Aquarius Aquarius is a good zodiac to focus. And lastly, the Piscas, because of its damage reduction for infantry, these stats are always very powerful. Damage reduction for a certain troop combination or for your whole army has a big impact in this game, which is why I would also have an eye on this zodiac. The infantry HP also very helpful with infantry attack as a nice boost in addition. And yeah, this is actually it about the zodiacs and about how I would build infantry plus archers in total. So all I can say is that I hope that this video helped you out and then I would say see you in the next one. Goodbye guys.